Hello, Douglas Gwillem here. Happy last Friday before the election. Have a little treat for you here. Um, Mr. Frank Arito has offered up his seasonally appropriate short story, Secret Ballot. Get your coat on, honey, called Randall. Time to go vote. He flipped off the radio, silencing a local congressman in mid-rant. He was glad election day was here. If I have to listen to one more campaign commercial, I think my head will explode. Randall's daughter, Caroline, fumbled with the zipper of her purple jacket. Why don't I get to vote? she asked as the zipper finally slid up with a buzz. You're too young. You have to be 18. The six-year-old's face scrunched up at the injustice of age. It's kind of boring, said Randall. Uh, you're not missing out. Chill November air blanketed them as they left the house, the sky threatening to drizzle any minute. They were alone on the street. Randall remembered the last election. That year the yards had been full of vote my way signs and there were so many people walking to the polls he had felt like part of a parade. This year it was mostly unopposed locals. Uh, why even bother, he thought. Because I, I've got nothing better to do. Caroline's school acted as the local polling station. They had canceled classes, so Randall took the day off. He always stayed home on school cancellations and sick days. Holly couldn't. She made real money. He felt resentment flare up. It's my civic duty, he said aloud. Is there going to be a bake sale? Caroline asked. Oh yeah, there's always a bake sale. An image filled Randall's mind, a table covered with brownies and cupcakes, Wanda standing behind it, selling sweets for the PTA. Randall imagined her looking at him with that smile she always wore. Uh, she was a good-looking woman. So is your wife, he thought. But Wanda had a kind of fragile beauty. There was nothing fragile about Holly. A wave of self-loathing chilled Randall's warm thoughts. Am I that guy? My wife is successful, so I need somebody on the side to feel like a man again. It wasn't as if anything was going on. He didn't even know Wanda's last name, and he would never cheat on Holly. But a man can dream, he thought. So Randall dreamt of brownies and fragile, beautiful smiles. The school stood only a couple of blocks away. Its proximity was one of the reasons they had bought the house. Caroline grabbed Randall's hand and made an exaggerated show of looking up and down the one street they had to cross. Go ahead, sweetie. I think we're good. Randall scanned the parking lot. Only a few cars, and they probably belonged to the people running the polls. He didn't think there would be a long line. Caroline skipped over to a scattered pile of long yellow placards. She picked one up and brought it to her father. Hal Phillips for mayor, Hal Phillips for mayor, she sang, waving the placard over her head. She held it out to Randall and waited for the inevitable praise he gave her whenever she read something aloud. Put it down. His voice came out harsh and Caroline's face clouded. Randall plucked the card away and stared at it. Right after the candidate's name was what looked like a big red exclamation point, but it wasn't. It was blood. Randall threw the card on the ground. He knelt beside Caroline and gave her a reassuring hug while his eyes played connect the dots with the numerous brown-red spots scattered over the cement entryway. What the hell was going on? It's okay, he said aloud. That paper was dirty. I, I didn't want you touching it. There would be people through the doors, retirees working the poles, Wanda with her table full of treats. Out here, they were alone and there was blood on the ground. He wanted to pick Caroline up, but settled for holding her hand as they walked in the school. Bake sale, 
Caroline squealed and ran to the long table full of confections. She reached for a Rice Krispies treat, all unhappiness forgotten. Not yet, baby, Randall said. We've got to vote first. He tried to shake off his own unease, wishing his emotions were as mercurial as Caroline's. He heard the tap of shoes on tile and turned to see Wanda approaching them. The sight of her lifted him like a wave of warm water. Maybe I'm not that different from my daughter after all, he thought. His face stretched into a pleased smile, then froze. Wanda's eyes were wide and rimmed with red, her mouth a hard, thin line. She nodded at Randall as she passed him and took her seat behind the table. She attempted a smile for Caroline, but it only lasted an instant and never made it past the corners of her mouth. Caroline only had eyes for the treats and didn't notice. Randall took his daughter's hand and gave her a gentle tug toward the gym, where the voting machine stood. His eyes bored into Wanda's, trying to convey his concern. The look was wasted. Wanda stared down at the snacks with all of Caroline's intensity, but none of her joy. Inside the gym stood two more tables. Instead of cookies, these held files containing the names of all the registered voters in the area. Randall was the only voter there. He walked up to the gray-haired woman at the closest table and smiled at her. Isabel Gracie was his neighbor and had worked the polls every year since Randall and Holly had moved to Collier's Run. She did not smile back, but Randall didn't expect it. Isabel took her responsibilities very seriously. Isabel, uh, was there a fight outside or something? I, I thought I saw blood on the cement. No, uh, nothing like that. Probably one of the voters had a nosebleed. Now, what's your last name? Deerhorn, yelled Caroline. What she said. Randall still felt uneasy, but if something bad had happened, surely Isabel would have told him. Isabel patted Caroline's hand, then scanned the pages of names in front of her. She turned the book around and pointed to Randall's name and the empty line beside it. If you could just sign there, Mr. Dearborn. Isabel looked at the signature and nodded. The only other poll worker in the gym, a heavy-set man with a gray goatee, sat at the second table. The large sticker on his shirt read, Hello, my name is Al. He watched Randall and gave a curt nod when their eyes met. Randall followed Isabel to the line of black voting machines near the gym wall. You're familiar with how this works? Isabel asked after she had prepped the machine. Yes, ma'am. Isabel nodded and then walked back toward the table. Bake sale, Caroline said, her voice a plaintive whine. Just hang loose for a minute, babe. We'll, we'll get there. Randall watched the screen fill with voting instructions. He pressed next until the actual ballot came up. He knew almost none of the names, not that it mattered. His usual strategy was when in doubt, vote for the women. They seemed less likely to mess things up. He worked his way from mayor to sheriff to various judgeships. Randall pressed the next button again. In the center of the touchscreen, the shape of a hand appeared. It blinked on and off, the words, place right hand here, written below it. That's new, Randall muttered to himself. Usually, after you filled out the ballot, the computer asked if you were sure about your decisions and let you see all your choices on one page. Randall pressed his palm to the screen. A surge of dull pain throbbed from his fingertips to his elbow. The kind of pain you get when you give your funny bone a good whack? He snatched his hand away, expecting it to be red. The goddamn machine shocked me. Randall rubbed his fingertips against the palm of his hand. Had it been a shock? A, a tingle might be more accurate, but it had been a strong one. Caroline stood near him, staring at the gym door, no doubt dreaming of sweets. She obviously hadn't felt anything. Randall looked down at the thick wires snaking away from the machine. No sparks. There's something wrong, he called out. Isabel walked over. 
There's nothing wrong, Randall, she said. Her voice was low, even though there was no one else near enough to hear her. I beg to differ, Randall held up his hand. It shocked me. Are you telling me getting electrocuted is part of the process? Don't be a baby. It, it's not that bad. Randall's mouth dropped open. Really? Uh, you know, Isabel, I, I think I'm done here. Let's go, Caroline. He stepped from behind the booth. Isabel stood in his way. I'm sorry, Randall, she said, her voice softening. I, I, I know it's unusual, but please, could you finish voting? I did it. it. It feels odd, but there's no damage. Randall looked at his neighbor of five years. He'd been ready to walk out, more over the way Isabel had spoken to him than the tingling in his hand. Now he felt undecided. Isabel must be in her seventies. If she could handle this, what did that say about him? Isabel took Randall's hand and stepped in even closer. Randall, please, uh, you have to vote. I, I thought it was some sort of joke at first, but it's not. It's deathly serious. I I I'm worried that... Isabel's voice tightened into a hiss of pain. She let go of Randall and pressed her hand to the side of her head. A thin line of blood trickled from her nose. I can't talk about how you should vote. Isabel hissed. She pressed a palm against her eye and groaned. Blood pattered onto the gym floor. Jesus, Isabel, hey! Randall looked for the other poll worker. She's bleeding, he called out. Al was on his way, moving fast, despite his girth. As he reached them, he plucked a monogrammed handkerchief the size of a hand towel from his pocket and pressed it to Isabel's bleeding face. Isabel crumpled into the big man's arms. You know we aren't allowed to influence the ballot, is he? Al said, patting her on the back. Is she okay? Randall asked. Al locked eyes with Randall. Not so much, he said, his voice hard. Is there anything I can do? Al had already turned and was leading the sobbing Isabel back to the polling tables. He didn't bother to look back at Randall. Vote, he said. Caroline stood with her hands pressed to her mouth. Randall went to her, wrapping her in his arms. It's okay, sweetie. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Gracie j just had a, a nosebleed. Caroline shook her head in an emphatic no. Bleeding was never all right. Randall kissed her cheek. He looked toward the tables. Isabel sat next to Al, dabbing at her nose. The bleeding had stopped. Come with Daddy, Randall said. He led Caroline to the table where Isabel and Al sat. Al's hard eyes softened when he saw the little girl. Mrs. Gracie, Randall said, Caroline wanted to make sure you were okay. Isabel took Caroline's hand in her own and gave it a squeeze. I'll be fine, dear. Hey, Randall said, looking at Al, you, you think Caroline could hang out over here while I finish up? Al nodded. Honey, I'll be right back. Caroline gave him a perfunctory okay, Daddy, and, and began describing her new winter shoes to Isabel. Randall walked back to the voting machine. The blinking hand still filled the screen. He looked at it and, and felt his stomach turn over. Civic duty, he said, and pressed his hand to the glass. The tingling returned. He expected it this time and did not pull away. The tingle spread like a brush fire over his nerve endings. It wasn't pain. Close, but different. Something between a bad itch and a tickle. It swept over him and then disappeared. In its wake, Randall felt languid, almost high. It's tranquilizing me, he thought, but couldn't work up any objections to the idea. The gym grew dark and then went away altogether. A word floated around in Randall's head. He reached for it, and the word came into focus. Choose. Suddenly, Randall found himself in a crowd. It was real. He felt them brush against him, heard their snatches of conversation. They were marching, and he felt himself pulled along with them. It was a parade, a, a celebration. In the center of the marching throng, 
like stones in a brook, stood angels. Maybe angel was the wrong word. There were no wings, but angel was the word Randall thought of when he saw them. They were tall, eight, maybe ten feet, but perfectly proportioned. They wore no clothes, and their skin had a pale golden glow that radiated out from them. Randall wanted to bask in it. They were beautiful, but it was a terrifying beauty, like the ocean during a storm. The crowd moved around the angels, each person straining to reach them, to feel their power and then pass on before being overwhelmed. Randall drew near one. He felt its presence for the barest moment, then found himself rising above the crowds. If we vote to invite them, the angels will come. The words rang in Randall's head as clear as thought, but not his own. More like an announcer, that guy who voices all the movie previews and broadcasting directly into his mind. The angels will come, and with them, we will change the world. Randall saw that new world, like his own, but perfected. He flew above it, and everywhere there was abundance, beauty, and smiling people. The scene changed. Randall now stood on the outskirts of a burning city. But it won't be easy, the announcer said. Now music, a an orchestra playing a theme in minor chords, accompanied the voice. There will be dissenters, those too mired in their own pride and beliefs to accept the changes to come. Randall did not march this time. He ran. He had voted against the coming of the angels, and his side had lost. The stench of blood and decay filled the air. Randall felt the lash of a whip on his back. He joined a stream of beaten, half-starved figures being herded toward a mass grave. A bullet tore through him, and he fell, rolling onto the still forms of those who had gone before. This is the cost of making the wrong choice, the announcer proclaimed. Do you wield the lash or feel its bite? The angels understand. They know the pain of choosing. Randall found himself on a wide plain, an angel standing before him. Behind it stretched a perfect world and its smiling inhabitants. You live in a hard, uncertain world. It doesn't have to be that way, the announcer and his music were gone. This was the voice of the angel, and it held its own music. Together we can remake your world into a paradise free of pain and worry. All you have to do is make... The right choice. The angel smiled, and the feeling of love and compassion in the smile flowed over Randall like warm summer rain. Randall blinked and took his hand off the voting machine. He swayed for a moment, finding his balance. The gym was visible again. Caroline stood by Isabel, still talking away. Jesus, he whispered then shook his head and looked back at the touchscreen. There were now two small glowing squares. One said yes, the other no. Randall took a long, shaky breath. The odd thing, if he had to name just one, was that he believed it all. There was no doubt in Randall's mind he was about to vote on whether to invite some sort of supernatural beings to take over the earth and make everything perfect. And anyone not with the program would be wiped out. Moreover, he believed the vote was binding. The angels could not just show up. There had to be a vote. It was a goddamn com campaign commercial, Randall said aloud. He looked again at his daughter and the people near her. Al stared back. He looked worried. That worry pissed Randall off. It had been a good campaign commercial. Hell, he could still smell the wildflowers from the Paradise on Earth scene. But you don't sell out humanity to some angelic super race just because they're pretty and know how to garden. The so-called angels were going to lose by a landslide. Humanity would muddle through on its own. Randall jabbed his finger down on the no button. 
The choices disappeared and the screen flashed red. The words, thank you for voting, appeared. Randall walked to his daughter. Isabella joined Al in looking at Randall. Their eyes bored into his for a long moment, and then Isabel let out a sigh. Al stood and slapped Randall on the back. What? You didn't think I'd... Al held up a hand. No, son, it's a secret ballot. You aren't allowed to discuss the details. He gestured toward the blood-stained handkerchief now folded neatly on the table. Oh, yeah, right. Randall said, now understanding the drying blood on the cement outside. Al took his seat. His momentary smile faded again into grim worry. Come on, Randall said, it's going to be fine. No one's going to... A tiny jab of pain behind his right eye cut off the words. You know. Yeah, sure, Al said, but he didn't look any happier. Thanks for voting, Mr. Deerhorn. Randall took Caroline by the hand. Let's get a brownie, kiddo. Wanda sat at the bake sale table, dabbing at her eyes. It's going to be okay, Randall said. They, they have to abide, abide by our vote. Uh, you can feel that too, right? Wanda nodded, but couldn't muster a smile in return. She handed Carolina a folded-over grocery bag. Here you go. I, I put a little of everything in there. Caroline grabbed the bag before Randall could argue. She reached in and pulled out a Rice Krispies treat. Thanks so much, she squealed before taking a huge bite. How much do I owe you? Randall asked. Don't worry about it. Randall got as far as the door when it hit him. They knew how I voted. Al and Isabel, probably even Wanda. They're here every election watching people make decisions. The ballot may be secret, but they looked me in the eye and knew, just like they've looked at every other person who voted today. Randall turned around. Wanda, she looked up. You've been here all day, right? Wanda nodded. Has it been busy? Off and on. Randall swallowed. How are we doing? Wanda opened her mouth, but no words came. Her face filled with pain. She shook her head once, then began rubbing her temples. Okay, uh, sorry. He turned to the door, pulling Caroline along with him. They stuck it on the ballot on an off-year election. Nothing but retirees and stay-at-home dads with the time to vote. People without a lot of power. People who maybe were a little resentful. People like me. On the way home, he fished his cell phone out of his pocket, pulled up his contacts, and dialed Holly. She answered after the fourth ring, sounding annoyed. I, I can't talk right now, Rand. I I'm in the middle of a half dozen things. Did you vote? What? Randall could hear voices murmuring in the background of this. This morning, uh, did you vote? No, I, I had that early meeting. I, I probably won't bother. I've got way too much on my plate. Listen to me. You have to stop on your way home and vote. Aren't you Mr. Civics all of a sudden? God damn it, Holly. Promise me you'll vote. This is important. Pain pulsed behind his eye again. He had to choose his words carefully. Oh, okay, Randall. I'll cast my freaking vote. Can I go back to work now? Yeah, I'll see you tonight. I love you. Holly had already hung up. Something wet ran over Randall's upper lip. Daddy, you're bleeding, Caroline said. It's okay, baby. Daddy's okay. Randall wiped the blood from his face and dialed the next number. This has been Douglas Gwillem Presents. Thanks for coming around for Secret Ballot by Frank Arito. Mm -hmm.